this is Crenstar, and today I got a yet another use for this XY instrument thing. I love this thing. Uh, what I wanted to do was, uh, actually, um, I'm going to go into contact here, and I am going to use contact uh, on the A channel here. And I am, I am going to move this thing manually for right now on there, and I am going to load up a guitar. Uh, an acoustic guitar, because what I want to do is I want to morph uh, the sound of the acoustic guitar into something else, something a little bit more patty. Uh, pad, uh, pad-like, not patty, pad-like. Um, so let me open up fingerstyle here. Let me go into here, load up uh, this rosette guitar. It sounds kind of nice, kind of cool. Okay, so the sound's coming out. It's coming through this one right here. Uh, so the um, intent is to grab something uh, different. Uh, the, the guitar is plucky to a point where it, it has a nice big transient, and then it kind of settles down from there, especially when I put my take my hand off of the, um, the key. Um, so, you know, hit the, the C3 key here. And, and the noise automatically goes away. Uh, so it's it's plucky if I hold it down for like a, a sixteenth or an eighth of a time. It, it it only it only makes the sound for that that long, and then it goes away. So if I hold down sustain, I want it to morph into something else. Um, so let me load up like say Massive X on another um, quadrant here. And let's find something Okay, so far so good. So now what I want to do is I want to go into here, go into here, do an ADSR. And I'm going to uh, put that to the XY here, and I'm going to say the Y coordinate. I'm going to move it up. So this is kind of like perfect. Uh, you can you can adjust the decay and the attack to to kind of hone in on where you want the sound to. So you can hear the guitar, and then it morphs into the into the pad and gives you a lot more sound, depending on your attack here, of how fast you're going into the second sound. Uh, and it, it kind of reminds me of what of these native instruments are putting out left and right, where there's two sounds, uh, an instrument that plays one or two sound or two or more sounds, uh, and it kind of blends the two sounds together or kind of goes in between the two sounds. Uh, this XY coordinate grid is really good with the with the ADSR put on here uh, to do it. That it starts off with the pluck, with the attack of the of the guitar, and it goes straight into Massive X. Uh, and then what I want to do further is use something from uh, Glitch Machines and kind of incorporate more more sound into that uh, and make it a lot more crazy.
you got and this is this is kind of perfect for like live play or, or messing around like I am right now where you're 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 hearing the sound of the guitar and it goes in. Um, so I want to give a bonus type of a type of tip for for Bitwig. Uh, give me a second to get it loaded. Okay, I got a polygrid. Uh, one of the cool things about the polygrid in Bitwig is is that you can slide something into the effect slot. It can actually be an instrument, and when you play it. It goes through. Uh, one of the things that you want to do this for is that you can open up modulation from inside the grid to the to the next instrument. Because uh, normally it doesn't go through. So if I put this modulator out and I say I want to modulate something, uh, let's say the the Y on here for for with this modulation, you can. Uh, and say it says the Y in the modulator uh, to do it. So now when this thing goes up and down. Uh, it, it goes, but how we're going to modulate it, we're going to use a sample. Um, we're going to, we're going to go in here. We're going to go to the sampler. Uh, and then we're going to hook it up and then we're going to go through, uh, my endless list of samples here. I'm going to grab something. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, go in here, and for everything that it, it plays... It has this grainy kind of wild thing to it that, that basically it's modulating based upon what the sample is doing. And the sample is a complex waveform. Uh, it's got a lot of peaks and valleys played really fast uh, that, that gives it the, the ability that it's not like an FL, LFO where it has a constant stream of uh, peaks and valleys that goes up and down based upon a algorithmic take on, on some type of... Uh, uh, sine cosine type of thing deal going on uh, that you went in programming. No, this is some crazy level of, of ups and downs uh, based upon uh, however many samples are in there, uh, 44,000 samples or whatever per second. So it's flying through the ups and downs and giving a crazy amount of modulation. And depending on the sample, gives you a different set of modulation for each sample that you're doing. So you can have samples that have silence in some parts uh, and then and then do something. And then um, depending on the, the thing here, you could also have, you can also play it. You can do it slower, so you can have a little bit slower modulation of it going through here. But it's still going to be crazy. Um, and then you can use these level modules here to somewhat cap it or to expand it so you can use the alternate uh, attenuate that to sit there and, and reduce the amount of crazy or you can use the amplify to amplify it so if it's if it's going low numbers you can amplify it to uh, bigger than one and stuff like that depending on the modulation that you need uh or the amount of um, push that you need to to go th to the, the to the places that you need to with your modulation. So it's giving it's giving my already the 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 wobbles that are going on or the 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 riser that's being created uh, a sort of a a static or a um a glitchy type of sound to it. Uh, which is also a pretty cool thing to do if you're if you're going for that style of of uh, either music or sound where you want you want it to to uh, have a problem sounding normal, so you want it to sound glitchy or staticky. Added with like maybe a bandpass filter. Uh, or something else in there could give you some really interesting possibilities. So let's let's do a really.
That's cool. You can barely hear it, but but it's it's actually sounding like the uh, the the sample that's being played. Interesting. Let's try another sample. That's the that's the sample doing that that additional noise. I bet you if you could do a kind of a put that through the uh, the noise like have a noise uh, and then have it have it filter based upon the sample, uh, you could probably hear it a lot better. Uh, overall, kind of a cool effect. Uh, kind of a um, I, I saw something on on Faceplant that uh, kind of put the tone of the sample. What they did is converted a sample to a wave for a wave table and then and then pushed that wave table through a uh, an analog, um, I think just a square wave or whatnot, and then used the the tone and and had the wave filter push that tone through the the thing and ampl and, and modulate the tone. Uh, ultimately, as a sample, uh, modulating a a, um, a a square a square wave. Um, but overall, you could hear, actually hear it, and it would sound like it's almost vol vocoded. Um, kind of almost the the same type of sound here. I'm not gonna say the same process. I'm gonna, it's it's almost the same sound. Sound. So it could be one way of merging or blending um, sounds uh, from a different modulation source. That that basically we're not getting any sound from this. None. Well, it's going through a modulation source, uh, and that modulation source is modulating a filter. Where are we getting the sound from? Uh, obviously, it's going through the filter, and it, it's bypass or it, it's it's doing what the the sound naturally would do. Um, uh, and and the natural world is you know like a speaker cone set would go in and out, and that's actually how we hear it. Um, so so the, it's just these wave files right here doing what wave files do. Uh, like little mini sine waves, except for not perfect like a sine wave would be, uh, and giving us that sound uh, that we're hearing, which is really wild. Because, uh, again, no sound coming out of the sample uh, at all. But we are hearing the sample, nonetheless, coming through the filter, and almost a ghost-like like sound. Like, like uh, really, if you think about it, it's it's kind of uh, otherworldly if, if you... Uh, um, because th there's no way for the sound to come through, right? Uh, or at least the the, the way that the this thing this thing uh, is built, or at least you know, um, we have no audio out here in the in the thing. Um, so therefore, it, there is no possible way the sound should be getting to us, and yet it is from another dimension, <laughs> or something like a Twilight Zone or something. Either way, 
kind of kind of crazy kind of crazy <laughs> no um ultimately it's because we're moving the filter as fast as the wave so therefore we're being able to hear the sound coming from it because basically we have uh, have noise or other sound pushing through to give us that the thing that the the, the things vibrating or waving against um and giving us a, that sound or at least that's the scientific theory i got uh either way i hope you enjoyed the video uh kind of cool fun uh i really like the the xy pad uh for kind of morphing sounds into other sounds using the adsr uh and then the uh, experimenting with the um uh sample uh by modulating something kind of a cool stuff so anyway uh, thanks for watching. Thank you very much. Um, and I will catch you later.